caught on a phone call. Um, so from the current slide. Before we do that, let me just go over these couple of announcements. <coughs> okay, I still haven't heard any word of <coughs> midterm progress report, so I don't know if they do yet or not, but uh, I'll get to them if I can get to them. Uh, <coughs> sorry. One thing going on today, you don't know if you're interested or not, but this evening, starting at 7 o'clock, just next door at the Bessemer Civic Center is the Miss Lawson State Coronation. Okay. And uh, I won't be able to be there because I'll be, be teaching a class here uh, until 7.45. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that. Now, I'm going to put this mostly for people online here, uh, if they are listening. Uh, next Tuesday is the what they call the 60% completion date for Title IV funds. And what I think that means is uh, if anyone's on any type of federal financial assistance, uh, if they had withdrawn from a course before next Tuesday, they owe money back. If it's after next Tuesday, you do not. Okay, so I don't think you'll be withdrawing, but in case anyone is thinking of it, uh, if you are on federal funds, the odds are it's going to be better to wait until after Tuesday to drop, uh, because before Tuesday you would need to re repay. All right, enough of that. Our volleyball team has a uh, tournament this weekend, starting tomorrow and Saturday at Gadsden State Community College in Gadsden, Alabama. So if you happen to be up there tomorrow or Saturday, stop on by and uh, cheer for the victory. And then the next one would be, actually I think it's the following Monday. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the following Monday, since we won't meet again, uh, we'll be hosting Bevel State here as a home match and that'll be 6 o'clock on Monday. All right. So, <clears throat> I think that gets us up to date on those. And hopefully some more will be coming in, but if not, we'll continue. We're in uh, Chapter 2, Matrices, and 2.4 Elementary Matrices. Um, and we're near the bottom of page 80, and we were just talking about... Uh, the LU factorization, okay? Now, they were just talking about how to get a, uh, remember, when you're doing LU factorization, I don't know if you recall this, but it is sort of an important thing. Uh, if you go back to page 79, Well, where was it? Okay, no, top of page 80, top of page 80. If a square matrix A row reduces to an upper triangular matrix U using only the row operation of adding a multiple of one row to another row below it, then it is relatively easy to find. So notice they do not allow exchanging two rows, and they do not allow uh, multiplying a row by a non-zero number. You can only do the uh, multiplying, the, adding a multiple of one row to another row, okay? That's the only row operation they're allowed. So therefore, if you don't have that leading one, the example six that we did had a leading one at the top. If you don't have a leading one at the top, you got to do your row reductions without changing that. You know, you can't multiply by something. So um, that does set up a little bit testier situations at time, but it still can be done, okay? Now, that's where the note comes in later down the page. Note that the multipliers in example 6 were minus 2 and 4. That's what you use to multiply 
uh, row one by to eliminate the uh, two in row three. And once you got that done, that's what you multiply row two by to eliminate the negative four in row three. Okay? Um, then, that's what you use in your elementary matrices, but then the re inverse of the elementary matrix, you just use the opposite. And we've said that before. They're saying it again here. Um, they say that the multipliers are negative 2 and 4, which are the negatives of the corresponding entries in L. Okay. Uh, I don't know what they mean by L. That's the lower triangular matrix, but I don't see... Oh, well, okay. Uh, this is true in general. If you can be obtained from A using only the row operation of adding a multiple of one row to another row uh, below, then the matrix L is a lower triangular matrix is one along the diagonal. But that's not necessarily true. Otherwise, the negative of each multiplier is the same, is in the same position Goodness gracious, they can really make something sound confusing. Let's just do it and see what happens. Here's what they say. Once you have obtained the LU factorization of the matrix A, you can then solve the system of N equations in N variables AX equal B very efficiently in these two steps. Now, these are not something to me that are... They may be very efficient, but they're not really, uh, what would be a good word for it? Uh, it's not something that you say, oh yes, that's how you do it. So pay attention to these. Uh, here's the first step. Let me get my pen set up. Okay. First step. All right. Now, oh, by the way, You've already gotten your L and your U, okay? You've attained the L and your U. So the first step is write Y, this is a, a, a new vector, is equal to U, that upper triangular matrix that you've already gotten, times X. Now X is, um, here's what you had, AX equal B. That's been given to you. You've taken the A, you've gotten your L, you've gotten the U. Okay. Then, with that U, you multiply it by that X that you have, whatever size X that is. And then you solve LY equal B for Y. Okay. Now, you, find, you make this be your, your, your Y. Okay, it's the upper triangular matrix t multiplied by x. You take that y, <coughs> this y here, and you do an L y. Okay, and set that equal to b, this b from over here. Okay, now solve that for y. Okay, solve that for y. Now, this seems almost nuts, okay? If you look at it, uh, here you're writing y is equal to this, and then you're multiplying y by the L, the lower triangular matrix. You're, you're saying y is equal to the upper triangular matrix times x. Then you're multiplying that y by L and setting it equal to b, and then you're solving this equation for y, okay? Now, you, of course, you've done something to it since then. You solved it equal to b. So this is a, uh, it, it seems like kind of, you started with a y and you end up with y, but they're not necessarily the same meaning for y, okay? Uh, so that's the first step. Like I said, this isn't intuitive at all, to me anyway. Maybe it is to you, but it's not intuitive to me. Then you solve ux, okay, which 
is y, right from above here, the thing you just did, solve that for x. Okay? Now, it seems like you're running in circles here, okay? That column matrix x is now the solution of the original system ax, and they stick something in here, lux, because a is lu, okay, uh, is equal to ly, because the ly is ux, I mean, yeah, l is uh, ux, uh, let's see, how to say that right, yeah, l is ux, so that would be ly, and you set that equal to b. Now, if, if that is a crazy seeming, I, I don't know, it, it seems like there could be a, a more reasonable way to state it, approach it, or something like that. Uh, now, the second step is just merely back substitution. So, when actual fact it's far easier than this seems. It seems like they're just throwing letters all over the page here, but they all make sense, but you're just simply back substituting. Because the matrix U is upper triangular, the first step is similar, except that it starts at the top of the matrix. Because L is the lower triangular, because L is lower triangular. This, that sentence doesn't make a lot of sense. But Charles makes a lot of sense, and he's here. Okay. All right. Uh, we're at the bottom of page 80. Uh, but because L is lower triangular, for this reason, the first step is often called forward substitution. All right. What a mess that was. And I think rather than hanging on to all this, we'll go back and refer to it. I'm going to clear the page and let's just do example seven. And hopefully that will hopefully make more sense then, okay? So here, now, <laughs> one thing this book is good at, this author's good at, he sure conserves his uh, energy on these things. If you take a look at this uh, system in example seven, here's what it is. X sub one minus three X two is equal to negative five, x sub 2 plus 3, this is on page 81 by the way, plus 3x sub 3 is equal to negative 1, and 2x sub 1 minus 10x sub 2 plus 2x sub 3 is equal to negative 20. Okay? Now, what would be your approach here? We're trying to solve that system of linear equations. Frankly, I think most of you say, just do gauss jordan elimination, <laughs> okay? That's what we would want to do. Let's do it the way they said, okay? So where would you begin in what we're doing in this section? What's that again? Okay, yeah, write the coefficient matrix. We'll call that matrix A, and that's going to be what? And? Right. All right. Now, this is equivalent to that matrix multiplied by your X matrix, which is X1, X2, X3. You can call that your column matrix or column vector, X. And that's equal to your column vector, which is B, negative 5, negative 1, negative 20. Now, I would do a little time out here because this kind of stuff kind of irritates me. 
not going to do it, I'm going to do it the way they're doing it. But if I saw this, first thing I would do is divide everything here by two. Okay? There's no reason to haul around these larger coefficients when you don't have to. And that would change this row and change that. You are exactly the same equation, same everything, but we don't have to do that. Now, the reason I'm not going to do that is because we've already determined, if you look, if you go back to example six, this is the, L, the matrix we already did the LU factorization for. So that's why I'm not going to change anything. I would have, if I'd have known they, where they were going with this, uh, I would have had us do the other one. So what we wound up with last time is this, goodness, my nose itches. The LU matrix that makes up A here is, let me see if I can find it now. Okay. There's the L. Okay, I was trying to find it. That would be the L here is 100, zero, 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 one, zero, and 2, negative 4, 1. Okay, that's the L. Here's your U. That was up in the Goodness, I just saw it. There it is. Uh, it's up above that as 1, negative 3, 0. 0, 1, 3. And 0, 0, 14. I'm almost glad they have that one in there because otherwise, and if you remember something you said uh, that they said earlier, Now I can't find it. Okay. Uh, in the paragraph on near the bottom of the page 80, it said, if you can be obtained from A using only row operations by adding a multiple of one row to another row below, then the matrix L is a lower triangular with ones along the diagonal. And sure enough, our L is ones along the diagonal. But if you notice, the upper triangular matrix doesn't have ones along the diagonal. It has a 14 there. And that's going to happen sometimes. You know? um, it may be the upper triangular has no ones on the diagonal. We hope it does some because it makes it easier to do, but it may not. But this one, they say, well, yeah, we'll always, they say we'll always have ones on the diagonal, the lower triangular matrix. Remember, we got that later by doing your um, inverse elementary matrices, and that almost guarantees you'll have one on the diagonal. I can't say it always will, but I think it will. Okay. So there is your upper your lower and upper factorization, okay, just like they've written in the book. So, they say let y equal ux, okay? So, y, this is, they're going to name this new vector, going to be a column vector, y, is ux, which is 1, negative 3, 0, 0, 1, 3, 0, 0, 14 times x1, x2, x3. Okay? And when... <clears throat> okay? Now they're not actually writing it down. Uh, they're just saying let y equal that. Okay? So they just say ux. Okay. Now, is it worthwhile to do anything with that yet? Uh, 
I probably didn't even need to write it down yet, but it, I did. So we're just going to let it go there. Okay. Now, so we're just saying that's our y. Uh, then they would say solve this equation, ly, l being 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, negative 4, 1, times y. And the y is y1, y2, y3. And that's equal to b, which is negative 5, negative 1, negative 20. If I wrote it right. Yeah. Now it says solve this system. And they say by forward substitution. Well, see what we get when we do it. We get 1 plus 0 plus 0. Uh, I'm sorry. y1 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to negative 5. So y1 is equal to negative 5. Okay? 0 plus y2 plus 0 is equal to negative 1. So y2 is equal to negative 1. And then the third one's a little harder. It's 2 times y1. Okay? Well, 2 times y1 is negative 10. Uh, plus 4, because minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4, that would be a negative 6. So negative 6 plus y3 is equal to negative 20, and that gives us y3 is equal to minus 14. If I did that right, okay? Okay, so you got your y's. Now, the solution of ly is equal to b. And yeah, we already did that. And y is equal to that. Now solve, okay, I was trying to find where we were on the page. Now solve the system ux is equal to y. So here's your ux here, and solve that equal to y, and y is negative 5, negative 1, negative 14. Okay? All right. Now, if you start from the bottom... And this is what they're saying before. This is back substitution. The other is forward substitution. So if you start at the bottom, you have 14x3 is equal to minus 14, right? Because you do a start at the bottom, and you have a 0 plus 0 plus 14x3. 14x3 is equal to minus 14. So obviously 4x3 has to equal negative 1, right? Agreed or not? Okay. Then do the next one. That would be a 0x1 plus x2, so that's going to be x2, plus 3 times x3, where x3 is minus 1, so that would be a minus 3, and that's got to equal minus 1. So x2 is equal to 2, because you add, my, uh, add 3 to both sides, and you get 2. And then you do the top one, and that's x1 minus 3 times x2, that's minus 6, plus 0, is equal to minus 5. So add 6 to negative 5, and you get x1 is equal to 1. There is your solution. I can't write it as a column vector, so I'm going to write it as a row vector. It would be 1, 2, 
minus one. Okay. I should write that as a column vector, but I can't. So this would be your x vector. Just imagine that's vertical. Okay. So it's really not that bad. Okay. Uh, all that thing of y is equal to that. You didn't have to put it down yet, but you could have. Because what you're doing, going to do is figure out what y is, and then later do that. So you start with um, L times Y is equal to that, and you figure out what your Y1, Y2, and Y3 is. Okay? Then your U times X is going to be the F. That's what we said here. U is equal to LX. So you do that one. This is back substitution. No, forward substitution here. Back substitution there. And you come out with you. Okay. A lot easier than their description, in my mind anyway, was. Following their description, I was getting dizzy. Okay. <laughs> but doing it, it, it sort of makes sense. Okay. That was the last in 2.4. Uh, homework exercise, uh, I assigned most of these last time. Any of the odds, 1 through 7, they're all, answers are in the back of the book, but they're also at calcchat.com for worked out solutions to these odd number problems. Either 9 or 11, both at calcchat, 13 or 15, both at calcchat, 17 or 19, or any of the odds, 17 to 21, they're all at calcchat. 23 or 25 is at calcchat, 27 through 33 are at calcchat. 35 is a true-false. It should be a count chat. 37 is a writing. Whether it's there or not, I'm not sure, but you can check and see. 39 should be a count chat. 41 or 43 should be a count chat. 45 should be a count chat. 47 is another writing exercise, so you can look and see if that's there. Uh, then, and here's this place where this book sort of drives me a little nuts. They do come up with a new kind of matrix and identify it in a problem, okay? If it was important, why didn't you put it in the text and then have you work problems with it? But no, they don't. Uh, it's called a... I, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Adempotent? Adempotent? I don't know how you pronounce it. Matrix, okay? Uh... And here's what an idempotent, or however you say that matrix is, is a square matrix A is idempotent when A squared is equal to A, when the square of the matrix is the matrix. Okay? Now, <laughs> uh, certainly if A was the identity matrix, that's true. So identity matrices are identical. Idempotent or idempotent or however you pronounce it. So what you're to do is on 49 and 51, you first square the matrix uh, and then see if that square of the matrix is the same as the original matrix. Okay. Then 53 is doing that as well. And it says determine what values of A and B would make that idempotent or however you say that. So, let you worry with that. 55's a proof, 57's a guided proof, 59's a proof. And then we would be ready for 2.5, but there's nothing in the course description that really indicates to me we needed to do these applications. Okay? And they are good applications, and they may be very useful applications for you, but they do take a bit of time to do. So since we're running a bit tight on time, I'm skipping this section. But the first of these are what they call stochastic matrices. A matrix is stochastic. Uh, if it's an N by N matrix, P uh, is stochastic when each entry is a number between 0 and 1 inclusive. 
Uh, it could be zero, it could be one, but always a number in between that. Okay. Uh, and the sum of each entries in each column is one. Okay, that's the other part. They're all fractional forms, or they could be a zero or one that's not a fractional form, but then the sum of every column has to be one. Now, where you use this is in probability. Probability deals with, the, if something, you're doing probability, you know the total probability of the entire system has to be one. Okay, if everything, any answer you get has to come from that system, then the probability of getting any specific answer is some fractional form, and when you add all those together, it's one, because the probability of getting some answer is what? You know, you're always going to get an answer. Okay. So that's what stochastic uh, matrices are about. And uh, they use that to measure consumer preferences. Basically because if you have a preference for something, it's either you hate it, you love it, that's the only thing you'll get, or, well, I, you know, maybe three-fifths of the time I'll get that, but two-fifths of the time I'll get something else. Okay? They've got to add to one. Okay. So, that's what the first couple of examples are. First three examples. Okay? Now, excuse me, 2.5 Oh, I meant to tell you this early, too. Sorry. I'm trying to ex excuse my hunger here is what it is. Uh, starting this week is second mini term. And first mini term, the class I had after this one was a physical science class that went from 115 to 545. 115 to 345 class and 345 to 545 lab. Okay. So what I would do, I'd eat 30 minutes of my lunch, or about half my lunch, before this class, and then do the last 30 after it, because I only had 30 minutes, a little over 30 minutes, between this class and the next class. Well, the second mini-term class doesn't start until 3.15, and it goes till 7.45. So I'm here late, Tuesdays and Thursdays now. Well, I started to say, well, I'll do the same thing with lunch. I thought, no, I don't need to do that because since I'm here so late, I need to eat lunch later. So I won't be as starving by the end of the next class. So that's starting today. I didn't eat any lunch before this, and I'm used to having lunch, at least part of my lunch by now. So I am starving, okay, but I'll get over it, and I'll get used to this after a while. But that's why... I'm up here doing this because right now uh, my stomach's saying you're way past you. Okay, and it shouldn't be, but it is. All right, but anyway. The next application of matrix operation is in cryptography, encoding. Okay, now, I was just hearing on the news sometime last week how so many things... Uh, that they're trying to do to help people from hacking and stuff like this is encrypting everything, okay? For instance, our election stuff needs to be encrypted, you know, so it's not out there that anyone can hack into. I'm not sure we're anywhere close to that yet. But encryption has gotten to be a really big topic. Guess how that's done? Linear algebra, okay? So the next... Uh, application here is cryptography, okay? And they do a few exercises in that. So if any of this is any interest to you, by all means, look into it. Uh, and then they have you encoding a message in example five, decoding one in example six. And then everyone seems to love the Leontief input-output model. And Every, I think every linear algebra course uh, book that I've ever taught from has this somewhere in it. Every one of them, as far as I can know. 
an American economist, I would never have guessed he was American by his name, Vasily W. Leontiev, okay? He published this model concerning input and output and economic systems, and that is another application of linear algebra. And I have fought with these before to get it to try to figure out what in the world they're talking about here, uh, but it does make sense, especially if you're an economist, okay? Uh, so if this is something that's of interest to you, follow up with that. Example 7 and 8 are there. And then this is something you do a lot of in, again, somewhat in statistics, but you do a lot of this in other scientific activities. Sometimes when you have a bunch of data, and data never fit exactly any model. Data, by their very nature, are a little bit random. You know, measurement error, sampling error, something. You always get a little variation. But, in general, the data should form some pattern. If that pattern is a straight line, then we have what we call least squares regression analysis. If, if doing something tends to give a proportional response, then you should be able to come up with some type of a linear regression analysis. So example eight is going over some of that. And uh, an example nine, okay? That mean example nine and example 10. So they are all great examples, but they are a bit tedious, okay? So rather than spend a whole lot of time, I'm introducing you to it. If you want to follow up on them, the exercises are here. Knock yourself out, okay? And then if you haven't had enough to do, the review exercise at the back of the chapter, again, the odd numbers have are available at calcchat.com, and odd numbers answers are in the back of the book. So you can do any of the odds, 1 through 5, 7 or 9, 11 or 13, 15 or 17, 19 through 25, 27, 29, 31, 33 or 35, 37 or 39, or 41, okay, uh, 43, 45, uh, 47 or 49, those are true-false, I think, yeah. And then I think the rest of those are section 2.5 examples. Uh, believe those are all from that. Can't say for sure, but I believe they are. If some of those are things you can do or are interested in doing, do them. Uh, but then they give some polynomial functions, which they didn't tell us how to do those, but you can probably figure those out. Then 57 starts as stochastic, uh, uh, encoding and decoding, you know, go on into the 60s, uh, and least squares starts in 73. Uh, so you see a lot of examples there. You don't need to do any of those except the ones you choose to. I did give you the test two last time, right? Both of them. Okay. So let's pick up and go with chapter three, determinant. These buttons are close to each other. If I don't pay attention, I hit the wrong one. The next one is, chapter is determinant. This is probably the shortest chapter we're going to do, and it has great potential to be the easiest chapter we're going to do. Determinants, we've already done a few things with determinants. We're going to do a few more, okay? So, let's get started on any questions before we leave chapter two. Okay, chapter three, determinants, 3.1. Now, statement, every square matrix can be associated with a real number called its determinant. 
You cannot take the determinant of a matrix that is not square. It makes no sense. But every square matrix, you can deter the determine a determinant, okay, for that matrix, okay? Now, historically, the use of the determinants arose from the recognition of the special pattern that occurs in solution of systems of linear equations. Boy, that's where we got most of this stuff, wasn't it? So here's that two by two linear equation. A11 x sub 1 plus A12 x sub 2 is equal to B1. A21 x sub 1 plus A22 x sub 2 is equal to B2. All right, that's it. Now, If you recall, if you had a system of equations like this, two by two, okay, and all those A's were sort of convoluted numbers, not ones, and probably not many zeros, then this could sort of be a mess to solve, okay? If they're ones, they're not too bad, but if they're not ones or zeros, it could be a mess. Well, here's how we'd go about doing it. One of the first things we would do is pick which variable you want to eliminate. It's called elimination by addition. Let's say we want to eliminate the x2 so we can solve for x1. So here's what we would do. I hope you remember this, but if not, we'll go over it now. Multiply the top equation by a2, 2. two. Now, let me pause just a moment just so I can get it out. By A22, and the bottom equation by minus A12. Now, you see what that does for you? Let's do it. This is tedious, I know, but this is, okay. It's much easier to do with numbers. Letters with subscripts, they just get messy. But they're doable, so let's do it. So the top equation is A11, A22, X sub 1, plus A12, A22, X sub 2 is equal to A22, B1. Agreed? All right. Second equation multiply by negative a12. Now, I think you'll see, if you haven't already seen, you'll see why we're doing it this way. This will be a minus a12, a21, x of 1, minus a12, a22, x of 2, is equal to minus a12, b2. Agreed? All right. Notice what happens in the middle there. When you add these two together, you eliminate that whole term, right? That's why we chose the A22 and the A12. We did multiply this one by that and this one by minus that. So then these would eliminate, as they do. It's called elimination by addition. So what we wind up with is this. When you add these two get together, you get A11, A22, minus A12, A21, times X1. is equal, because these two have gone away, right? They've disappeared. It's equal to uh, A22, B2. 1 minus A12, B2. Okay, I hope I did that right. All right. Now, if you want to solve for X1, then here's what you do. Divide both sides by this thing in parentheses. Okay? And what that gives you is X sub 1 is equal to A21 B1 minus A12B2 
divided by A11, A22 minus A12, A21. Okay. Now, notice what you have here is your answer for X1 is equal to a combination of your coefficients of X1 and X2 here and the constants there. So these are just numbers. There were numbers in your problem. You can write them down, and this is your answer. Always. Always. Okay? It's just like a uh, quadratic formula. You can get your zeros by just writing down minus B, you know, plus or minus x square root U. Just those numbers that you had as coefficients and the constants, you can come up with what your solutions are. But here you come up with your solution just by the proper use of these. Okay, so why? I mean, so what? What's the big deal with this? Okay, well, if we were to do the same thing and eliminate x2, and I'm not going to do it, but hopefully you do, to eliminate x2, what we would do, I'm sorry, we eliminate x2. To eliminate x1, we use the top equation, multiply it by a21, and by the bottom equation by minus a11 or something like that. And anyway, you come up with x2 is equal to, when you did that, you would get, I'm going to just copy there so I don't have to do it myself. And they write the b's in front. I, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I like a in front. a11b2 minus a21b1 over a11 a12, I mean 22, surprising but true, minus a21, a12. Okay? Now the first thing to note there is your denominators are identical. It just happened to wind up being exactly the same denominator. Now, another thing to note is what are those denominators? A11 times A22 minus A12 times A21. Guess what that is? The determinant of that coefficient x1. Remember? The down diagonal, product of the down diagonal, uh, minus the product of the upper diagonal. That's it. That's your determinant. We used it earlier, remember? I can't remember exactly what we were using for, but we were using it, and that's what we got. Now, here's the even stranger point. To get the x1, rather than, uh, just want to show you things that are similar here. Notice the uh, What you would do is instead of this term, write the b1, b2 there, and then do the determinant. And you get, now that's to do x2. To do x, yeah, that gives you x2. To get x1, write your b1 and b2 here, and then you get, I said it right the first time. I've got so many letters on the page, I'm getting confused. I think I, I wrote something down wrong, didn't I? You let me get away, that's a 2-2 two -two there. That's a 2-2, two -two, not a 2-1, right? That's, oh man, why'd you let me do that? Yeah, that's a 2-2. Two -two. Let's go and say, this isn't making any sense. Okay, that's a 2-2. Two -two. Now I've got it right. Okay, let's go back. To get your x1, the denominator is just the determinant of that matrix. Your numerator for this one would be 
Let's take this and move it here instead of x1, and you have b1, a22, that's your down diagonal. There that is, minus the up diagonal, which is a12, b2. Because if you wrote that over here, and sure enough, that gives you that. Then for this one, move the b22 for the x2 here, and you get a11, b2, minus a21, so, we've just done something we're going to do later as an application, but uh, that works. But not always. When does that fail? If this denominator was ever equal to zero. And remember what we said when we were doing them earlier? If the determinant is, when we were talking about uh, whether a matrix had an inverse or not. Remember, we used, for a two by two, you could use a determinant, and it was always your denominator, right? Unless that determinant was zero, and then it didn't have an inverse. Well, guess what? If that denominator is zero, it doesn't have a solution. Every other one will, okay? So, uh, I went into way more detail than what they meant here, so let me do uh, the definition here. I think I'll go to a clean page so I won't be running out of room. All right, to erase. All right. Well, don't let me get carried away too much, okay? Um, it's not nearly as important as it was before when I had a class right after this, but still I don't want to get carried away too much. So here is your definition of the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. Uh, I'll write it out this time. D-E-T-E-R-D, -E -E determinant. Okay. After this, I'll very seldom write the word of a matrix. Okay. A 2 by 2 matrix. <clears throat> a. Here is your matrix A. A11, A12, A21, A22. Our favorite names for it, right? <clears throat> the determinant is given this way. Now, the book likes to use this abbreviation. I'll show it to you. Okay? D E T of A. And that's perfectly all right. Okay? But it's so much easier to write this way. Now, those look like absolute value bars, don't they? Okay? When you've got a matrix inside of them, they're not absolute value bars. Okay? That means determinant. And that's the easiest way to write a determinant. Rather than writing brackets, write bars. Okay? Now, a couple things to not be confused by. Absolute value bars indicate whatever's inside is always positive. Not so here. The determinant can be either positive or negative. So don't bring that over with this. So here's what the determinant is. Like I just said, it's the product of the down diagonal, A11, A22, minus the product of the up diagonal. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter which order you write them. Um, they do A21, A12. But because multiplication is commutative, it, it doesn't matter. I usually like to do A21, A, A12, A21, but it doesn't matter. It's the positive down diagonal minus the, the product of the down diagonal, positive product of the down diagonal minus the product of the up diagonal. That's your determinant of a 2 by 2 always. Okay? Very easy to do. Since it's so easy, let's do a few. Here is A. A is negative, no, 2, negative 3, 1, 2. Okay. What is the determinant of A? You tell me. Seven. Perfect. Four. 
minus or minus 3. That's 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, B. B is the matrix 2, 1, 4, 2. What's this determinant? Zero, absolutely. Four minus four is zero. Okay? Here's C. Zero, three halves. Two, four. What's this determinant? Oh, we love our fractions. Second, negative three? Is that what you said? negative 3, because the product of the down diagonal is 0, minus 3 halves of 2 is 3. So 2 has got a plus, 2 plus a 3, but it's up diagonal, so it's a negative. Negative of that. Okay. If only all determinants were as easy as 2 by 2. Okay? They're not. I promise you. So the book launches into how we go about, or at least a start for how we go about determining of a, a matrix that is larger than a 2 by 2. And these are using two terms they call minors and cofactors. And frankly, once you get used to doing these, I never go back and remember even what a minor and a cofactor is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I sort of do, but, you know, I don't ever use the terms again, really, or or even actually use them the way they're supposed to be used. So let's say I'm going to clear my screen here, and this is a little tedious, but hang with it. A is a square matrix. Remember, if it's not square, it's not going to have a determinant, okay? So A is a square matrix, okay? A is square. Then the minor, okay, and we call that capital M, IJ, okay, of the entry A sub IJ, okay, is the determinant I started to write it again, of the matrix, I'll write it, okay, that you obtain by deleting, this is a really, I mean, it's, it really is a simple concept, but they can make it seem so hard. The ith row and the jth column, okay, of matrix A, okay. Now, that's the minor. The cofactor, that's a big long word, isn't it? Minor seems pretty simple and short, but it's sort of involved. The cofactor, on the other hand, cofactor Cij of the entry Aij is this. Minus 1 raised to the i plus j power, don't worry, you never do it this way, I don't think, times m i j, okay? What that is meaning, the cofactor is either plus or minus the minor. That's all. That's it. All this mess just makes this either a plus one or a minus one. If i plus j is is even, this is a positive number. If i plus j is odd, this is a negative one. 
That's it. So if, once you've determined what that minor was, a cofactor is just plus or minus it. Okay. Now, how do you determine whether it's plus or minus? Do I do this every term? Absolutely. Every time? Absolutely not. Okay. There's a much easier way to do it. Okay. And but they make you do it this way first, I think. Uh, okay. Less I think I'll delete so I'll have enough room to write. So what if A was a three by three? Square matrix, you can do a determinant, okay? Uh, what we're going to do is the minors and cofactors first of A21 and then of A22. Uh, M of 21 and M of 22, okay? And then we'll do C of 21 and C of 22, okay? Minors and cofactors of those two. So here's your generic A, A11, A12, A13, three by three matrix, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. Okay, to get the minor of A21. Okay, that means, uh, yeah, of A21. That's the first one we're going to do. We'll wipe out its row and wipe out its column. Okay, then the minor is the de determinant of what's left. So M21, wipe out the row and column of A21, and that minor would be the determinant of A12, a13, A32, A33. And that would be A12, A33 minus A32, A13, or whichever order you want to do it. That's the minor. That's all there is to it. It's the determinant of what's left over. Okay? You tell me what M22 would be. I will take off my construction line so you can do yours. What would we do to get A22? Tell me and I'll do it. Okay, wipe out the second row, second column because we're doing it for 2-2. Two, two. Right. And then what would be its determinant? A11. A13, A31, A33. And what would be the determinant of that matrix? Down diagonal? Tell me. A11, A33, minus... A13, A31, whichever order you want to do those, okay, but it's going to be minus. So, we've gotten the minors for those two. Now, what's the cofactor? Cofactor of 2, 1, okay. Now, the way they say to do it is to take negative 1 and raise it to, since this is 2 and 1, 2 and 1 is 3, that's an odd number, that would be a minus 1 times m21. Okay, whatever this determinant came out to be, it's going to be the negative of it. That's all. That's all the cofactor does is multiply the minor times a plus 1 or a minus 1. In this case, a minus 1. And a two or c22 would then be 
Yep. From 2, 2. Yes, because 2 plus 2 is 4. That's an even number. Even number of negative 1 to an even number power is going to be 1. So it's just going to be the same thing you got for M22, the positive of that. That's all. That's all the cofactor is. Uh, you did all the work in the minor. The cofactor just may have changed the sign or left the sign alone. Okay. Now, is that how I do the terminal? No, let me tell you what I do. And you can do this on every one imaginable. Okay? Now, I still do the minors, but I don't use that formula for cofactors. Here's what I use for that, the sign of that thing. A21, right? What I do, start in the upper left with a plus. And as long as you go right or left, up or down, not diagonal, right or left, up or down, change signs every time. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and that was a minus, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Whatever you do, it always going to come out minus, okay? So just do the simplest way from here, plus, minus. It's a minus. You guess what this one would be? Plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus. However you get there, that's going to be plus. So do I ever use the, I've already erased it, the minus 1 to the eight, I plus J? No. When I stop to think about it, I say, yeah, that's right. But I just do plus, minus, plus. No matter how big or small the matrix is, it's going to be that. Okay? Uh, and so let's think if this is a 2 by 2, plus, minus, plus, minus. I'm going to plus, minus, plus, minus. Plus is down, minus is down. Okay, so. Doesn't matter. All right, so that's what. But once you determine the sign, then you still do the same thing. Wipe out this, wipe out that, and do your determinant there. And I don't ever write them down like this. I just I wipe them out here and here and do this and this minus this that. Not even writing them down, and then give the sign of whatever the sign was. Okay. So do we have time to do example two? Probably took too long, didn't I? Okay. So, let's... I thought I had a pencil out. There it is. Uh, we'll start next time with example two. Okay? Which means I need to erase my O's here. Okay. All right. Let's see what homework exercises you can do in this section. Again, pretty short sections. I think you can do any of the odds one through nine. You can start trying to do the odds 13 and 15. If you can't do them, hold up. We'll do examples with them later. Okay? And we'll come back and uh, finish up there next time. Okay? Determinants are pretty easy. There are some people say there's not even any reason to do determinants anymore. You have other ways of doing it. But still, they are used for so many different things. So these are sort of handy to know what to do. Like we used them earlier. We'll use them in several surprising ways. I think you'll find. All right, good deal. Any questions? Have a good weekend. And you got a test to work on, so what can make it better than that, huh? <laughs> okay.